Hello and welcome to the second video in this series. This one is about labor industrialization's impact. It's going to be pretty cool. So, the big picture is agricultural economies were based on the family unit, and the Industrial Revolution had a significant impact on the structure and function of the family and its role in society. The Industrial Revolution placed new demands on the labor of men, women, and children. Workers organized labor unions to fight for improved working conditions and workers' rights. So this is an image of what the cottage industry looked like. And we're going to compare this to the factory system that emerged during the Industrial Revolution. As you can see, there's multiple generations, child, parent, grandparent, all in the same home together doing uh, work at the same time, all towards the same goal. Because you can see that they're making this into cloth here, which they may be making into their own clothes. They're spinning the what is probably wool and then you know, getting all of the... Uh, the gross stuff out of the wool before it can even be spun. It's a whole process that they would do together, generally to make things for themselves. And so families used to make their own goods to use and sell, and sometimes they would do piecework for larger companies, like a shirt here, a shirt there. They would do so many shirts by the end of the week and get uh, paid for that. But the real uh, look of it was that all the family members were working together, many generations. But then there's this transition phase, because it was easier faster and cheaper to make goods in factories. And because they were making these goods more cheaply, instead of having to make everything for yourself, you could just sell your surplus food or some extra things that you made and then buy all the things that you need. That's a consumption-based lifestyle, just like we have today where you work in a job but then go and buy the stuff you need. Um, working for wages as a result becomes the dominant kind of labor and it still is today. So this is what a factory looked like particularly a textile factory in this case. So you can see now that all of the cloth is being spun out into these giant, or the thread is being spun out into these giant spools instead of a little tiny one in your house, being run by huge belts, which are probably run by steam engines. Um, and there's lots of people working together, but they're all about the same age. And in this case, they're all women working together. So single gender, single generation, it's a big change. There were harsh working conditions in these factories. Lots of people lost hands, fingers, people lost sight, eyes. They got, uh, you know, dust in their lungs. They got all messed up that way. Um, men were competing with women and children for wages. So everyone was trying to work in the factories because you needed money to live because you were pushed off of your farms, but it was horrible to work there. Um, and the labor of children and women kept costs low and profits high for the people who owned those factories because... Um, women and children had less power in society, and so if they started to agitate for wages, they didn't have a lot of political clout, they didn't have a lot of money of their own, and so the people who owned factories were able to exploit them for that reason. Uh, the owners of factories and of larger industrial things like mining towns, they, they controlled many aspects of their workers' lives. Like, uh, if you lived in a company town where it was just you living in houses owned by the company, you were paying rent to them, you bought things in their stores. Um, you There were clauses in your contracts contracts where you were limited in what you were allowed to do and choices you were allowed to make for your family. It was a big, weird thing. It started from, I think, a good place in the hearts of factory owners, but it got exploitative. Uh, slavery was weirdly affected in this time period because the cotton gin Eli Whitney had created increased demand for slave labor because it was much easier to get the seeds out of the cotton and then it could be made into cloth much more quickly and that made it more profitable because you didn't have to have people just going through and pulling out all the seeds. So it spread slavery throughout the United States because there was so much money in it, so much demand, and it was now so much easier to supply. You could uh, take land that wasn't didn't used to be profitable to grow cotton on and now you could grow cotton there and make money. So people in the South expanded the use of slave labor really significantly. Um, but then, by the end of the Industrial Revolution, the United States and Great Britain had outlawed the slave trade and then slavery itself altogether. So clearly there were some complex things at play that um, both increased slavery and then shut it all down. And we'll look more in depth at how that works in class. Labor unions also rose during this time, and they were a way for workers to come together and get some power for themselves in this economic system. So they encouraged strikes to demand increased wages and improved working conditions. They lobbied for laws to improve the lives of workers, including women and children. Um, and they wanted workers' rights and collective bargaining between labor and management. And you see there's this difference between labor and management. Well, 
a lot of times before labor unions, labor, it wasn't like a whole group of guys over there all arguing with the people that owned the factory. It was like individual guys who would try and start to argue, but then would get fired. Uh, or some other guy would come and go, well, that guy's being a jerk to you, owner of factory. I'm willing to work for less, and I'm not a jerk. And then he would get hired, and that other guy would get fired. So labor unions were a big part of allowing workers to come together and bargain with management collectively as an all together. Finally, here are some big, broad social effects. Uh, there were reforms that ended child labor, and the push to end child labor was led by women, and they entered the political process, some of them, for the first time. It changed the role of women in society. Um, and the end of child labor led to an expansion of education access for both genders, and then the forces of women being in the political system for ending child labor and other things, um, plus the education access led to increased demands for women's suffrage, suffrage being the right to vote. So in the end, the Industrial Revolution made for more gender equality, which is interesting. And that's the end of this video.